I'm Marie Oman and welcome to my video course Piano Well. And as you have probably already guessed, today we're going to talk about another idiot by shopping. Um, in this video, I will show you how practicing by Piano Well system will help you uh, improve technical and musical sides of your performance. I uh, also want to mention that I'm going to talk about musical mean of expression here very briefly, so if you're really eager to know about them better and uh, develop them in full measure, please go to my website and download training book for free um, and also watch all the lessons of this course that shows and explains how to work with this book. The link is on the screen and below. Uh, in this video. So let's go ahead and start our lesson today. So we're gonna start with very first musical mean of expression such as timber with movement, intonation and weight, um, and correct movements of wrist and elbow. That will let you play this etude with legatissima that is written in the score and also uh, this is just the basic of correct sound production that lets you play with ease, very fast, with good and beautiful tone, uh, when your fingertips are smart and uh, tenacious, when your wrist is flexible and not tensed, and your hands are also free of any tension. Um, so let's start with imagining every note in timber. Um, Starting from this note, I'm going to use violins, anything below uh, for cellos. Mm. So that when we imagine every note in this timbre, that will activate our fingertips and that will make our fingertips be smart and um, sensitive and tenacious and lively. Okay, I really apologize about this again, but it's gonna stop very soon. So, um, we also need to mention this note in timbre with movement, and um, as you remember, uh, the rule to find the movement of the note uh, is as follow. If the current note is higher than previous note, then the movement of this note is the right. If the note is lower than previous note, the movement to the left. Uh, for example, over here, right, left, 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 right, left, left, left. And we also imagine glissando between notes. Uh, this way. Uh, especially when it comes to this large list. future will let us make good legatissima and uh, because as we know the wrist just copies this pattern that we make in our head um, wrist just follows left or right and the first chord I also make right um, so that will actually just make our wrist be flexible and let our wrist sing while we're playing and uh, yeah so it will be free of any tension um well these two things when we able to imagine every note in timber with movement um actually help us to develop independent thumb because it's so much important this etude you know many times students play this way they play The finger by the by the um, with the help of their hand, which is very uncomfortable to make. So um, when we imagine timbre, remember I told you it comes to our fingertips. It activates our fingertips with such with some impulse. So our thumbs start playing not with like this, but with fingertip. And then when we imagine, you know, this grisante between notes and then later make intonation with weight, that will let this finger actually exert over here before playing. So uh, this is how he he will he will become independent. 
and it will be very easy to play in this way. Also, uh, ability mentioning every note in timbre with movement helps with these chords because these chords have um, very thick texture, like uh, four or five notes in every chord. Uh, so if you imagine every single note in this chord simultaneously, uh, you will be able to control every note. And so the chord will sound full um, and it will be very comfortable to play these chords. So um, if you still have trouble to imagine all the notes simultaneously, then remember our rule with start imagining notes uh, sequentially. Now head, and then we're gonna reduce time between notes until the time is zero, and we can imagine all five notes sounding in our head. Especially, it's very important when it comes to this octave because if we just have a light idea about like melody, then probably our first finger will be lost. So it would be just something like this sometimes or especially when we play piano not every note would sound would be like this something like that um, so yeah, if we imagine two notes in this octave then you can control both your pinko and your thumb this way so um, after that we just um, what I just do, I'm just actually marking the fingering in the notes because um, it's very important to always play with the same fingers. I think it's no need to explain that. And I also circle notes where I move my elbow because of changing position. Um, so the direction of the new position. And I'm actually going to go ahead and show you a little bit um, how I'm how how I'm doing it here. So. Okay. So right let's start with right hand, okay? So even though wrist goes right, elbow goes left, right on the next chord, it's very important. Don't wait guys till the very last minute and then rush to the new chord. <laughs> so elbow left. Right, right, left. 
game till it comes to uh, bar number 25. So, right. and wait uh, you're gonna um, you're gonna still imagine every note in seem various movement um, just want to show you difference between playing without intonation weight and with intonation weight so why we need this to make um, 
this beautiful glissando that, that is written where every note pours into another note. Um, before I show you this, I also want to mention uh, this topic, this accent topic, you know, because as I told you in previous lesson, not every accent that is written by Chopin belongs to intonation, not every accent change intonation. Uh, some of them he wrote for his students, so please don't um, don't treat them like literally like changing intonation, uh, especially in the beginning here. Uh, that little accent that goes on every quarter, just ignore them. This is not for intonation. Uh, if you make them, that will absolutely change your line, change the character of music. And even though it's folk or you know, if you do such uh, so many accents for in the fast tempo, you will never could get a good legatissima. Uh, what he probably again mean here is maybe the second finger of his student didn't work very well. I don't know, he wants to emphasize it somehow, these notes, but this is definitely not about uh, intonation thing. So where I'm actually doing this is where he wrote sforzando or just one or four to one note. I'm making it the very first one, then here, here a little bit, then in bar 14, I mean this one. Then again, the next accent I ignore. Uh, in bar 23, in bar 24, um, I actually also do this in bar 41 because it's quite the same. I'm doing it on 54, then again, over here, nothing, uh, 64, so basically every grammar is written for standard, not this one, uh, 69, and that's it. So, um, as you remember, we intonate uh, accents. Uh, with special technique that will make um, that will let us play this accents not too harsh, not too soft, just exactly what we need. When we pass the first half of the distance um, with uh, resistance, and then uh, the very next half we extremely speed up and uh, put more weight. Uh, for example, if we're gonna sing this, one, uh, that would be like uh, this way. In the very beginning, I also make accent, and if it's hard for you to make accents on the spot right away, just imagine the same little motif that leads to this B. And in this case, you will sing. So you sing. And then. Yeah, make sure that you intonate accents in the right way. <laughs> Otherwise, it will not um, it will not express um, the character of music correctly. Uh, so now I'm playing first without intonation and weight, just like a robot making uh, just movements and imagining sound. And next time I'm gonna play with intonation and weight. So without. And I'm not playing a forte, I'm not forcing anything, it's just no dynamic, nothing.
sure that you really imagine every note while playing, uh, th then you will feel that your sound is on your fingertips. It's very important here. So now I'm going to play with intonation and wait. Uh, we need this musical meaning of expression uh, to better understand what the music is about, to feel the emotional structure of music, and um, it also brings better sensation to our fingertips. And um, well, what else? It somehow enrich and change our intonation and makes it be more interesting. Uh, you know, I absolutely love this etude, like many of you. Uh, and one of the reasons why this etude makes so much impact on me is because of its harmonies. So much powerful, there is so much meaning in these harmonies. Um, and if you never did this before, even if you play this etude for a long time, I really suggest you to make it, you will just enjoy it. So what you need to do, and what, what we're gonna do together is playing all these harmonies of this etude, listening to them, trying to catch emotional color of every harmony and then later we're going to mention uh, notes in timbre in this emotional color uh, with movement and then play it with intonation and wait. So let's go ahead. <laughs> the first one. And you will see how many harmonies are full with pain over here. Thank you. 
question that is in the air, there is no answer. And then we come to F minor, F minor, very like endless sadness. every single note in timber in the color of emotional color of this harmony you will feel how it change um, the way you touch the keyboard it really enrich your sensation and fingertips as well as your intonation we need this musical mean of expression to avoid this noise effect when all the notes sounds in the same level and where no contrast between forte and piano so what we need to do is voicing the top in every chord and octave especially down here and we're gonna voice also in the left hand every bass especially here this one. to this little crescendo diminuendo that are written within this bar. Uh, they belong to phrasing. Please don't uh, confuse them with dynamics. Don't take them literally. Uh, it was probably written by maybe editor or maybe by Chopin again, but it was like a result of what, what was of what he was feeling. So I still encourage you to to highlight this bass and then the rest play more far away and as you remember when we want when we want to voice some notes we simply imagine them closer and the rest on, ba on the background so yeah every note here bass dimensional sounding in your left hand. Uh, also, I'm gonna play, so after this you imagine every note in timber, in harmony, with correct dynamics, uh, and you play it with intonation and lead. I just thought that, you know, even this one, if you play the seated many times and 
show it to your teachers and professor. Maybe some of you already heard how professors like like softer here and then loud over there. But you know, you can only reach this contrast if you really can imagine notes very loud and then very soft. And even in this chord, imagine every single note from out of these four notes soft and still this G closer to your and you can control and even with left hand then you can reach this contrast between forte and piano. Um, you know I just want to show you how intonation weight how much it's important when it comes to playing with dynamics because um, when we play without intonation and weight our forte would be too harsh and our piano wouldn't be soft enough um, just like this you know if you just play it without any intonation but still with this great sound okay let me try <laughs> It's so much, it's so wrong, it's so wrong. It will bring tension to your hands and everything will be flat and the sound will be harsh. But when we play it with intonation, when we express this dynamic through intonation and weight, you see how, how it changes everything. to really give my to really let my hand uh, relax in this short time in this short fragment um, so this is it next step is about sound texture um, so we need sound texture to bring more freedom to our body and to our hands and to um, make the sound be three-dimensional and also it brings somehow more power to our playing. So in this step we just imagine every note in texture of deep water, in the harmony, in dynamics and voicing and then we in with movement and we're playing with intonation and weight. Uh, starting from this stage I actually start using pedal in my practicing. Before I never use any pedal because I never imagined this pedal in my head. But with sound texture, it gives you this um, effect of pedal in your head, so you kind of in harmony what what comes out from the piano. If you understand what I'm talking about. So if yeah, I imagine in texture, in sound texture. Thank 
position, it makes it be more free. Well, whatever. If you're still asking uh, yourself what is the power, just go to some texture lesson and watch that video. Um, the pedal I'm using here, you know, is absolutely up to you, up, up to every one of you. Mm. It's what you want to reach. I, because I'm kind of romantic girl, I like more sound and that's why I'm changing pedal every half of the bar. really on, on the heart of person, on the type of person, so I cannot suggest you anything here. So next step is very important, is musical speech. Musical speech really improves, again, both sides of your performance, musical and technical. Um, you know, you can only understand fully expressiveness of melodies through intonation and musical speech. When you intonate every note with emotional meaning of... Um, when you intonate every interval with emotional meaning of this interval. Uh, I can show you how it works. So, as you remember, second means waiting, asking... Um, Third means third and uh, second and seventh means waiting, asking. Third and sixth means beauty and romance. Fourth means call to action, very energetic. Uh, Triton, mysticism. Fifth, uh, contemplation, kind of meditation, kind of calm. Um, octave and unison, um, open statement, also very energetic. So if we go ahead and just see the pattern of the melody here. Especially over there, two down and seven, seven up, <laughs> seven up in the window. And seven up. Um, there's so much pain over here. And then it comes to the main motif. If we go to the main motif, let's look at this pattern. Two up, second up, and then unison. So if we sing home, oh, it's very important to actually intonate this, this unison. This is the whole meaning here. And then six down. Then again, and then we're going four up, and then five down. Again, this asking intonation comes to unison four up, five down, two up, two down, and then unison. And even here, see. Small, 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 small second till we reach top and then three down, same, down, down. And you will see how much meaning um, over here, how much meaning you can express through musical speech in this melody. Um, in the left hand, the same, you can see there is pattern like only three or two, then three, and then again two up, two down. Always this 
lacking intonation. I like this place, you know. This is six up, first, then the seven. Well, basically, even though it's octave, it sounds like seven, so it's seven. And again, this two up. speech. In this stage you can play we out of time because we don't make any pulsation so far and that you that will let you take as much time as you need to fully feel musical speech in every interval to fully express yourself through playing. Uh, so let me show you how it can be. speech is that we feel uh, interval before actually playing it and that means that we feel the um, we already pre-feel the finger the finger already exert even without playing um, and that helps it kind of feel the distance of this interval and that helps both in Large, large leaves, for example, here, when we play like four up, we already feel how to intonate fifth up. It's like in playing strings, you know, they never miss the pitch because they feel the distance of the interval. So the same here. If you want to be absolutely accurate in your lips, always feel which interval you intonate. In this case, hand kind of feel for how long or how short the hand should move in this leap, you know, to, to make this interval. Um, this is how it helps with leaps and the same it helps with um, places where it's not comfortable to, to play because one of the, fing if, of the fingers is weak and it's not stable, for example here. Going down, our fourth finger is very weak as we know, and sometimes it doesn't really work as fast and as strong as we need. So be sure that you always intonate this four 
down. You have this pattern in your head. Four down, three down. one finger uh, cannot hit the right key then you should be really careful about interval um, you intonate with this finger for example here I don't know why but my third finger doesn't play very fast so I make sure that I intonate this four up both in a musical and technical way. Uh, first of all, good phrasing helps to distribute energy while playing uh, and maintain this natural breath while playing that will let your hands be free. Because as we know, like if we play on one energy level all the time, it's very difficult uh, to listen to such performance as well as to play <laughs> because well, hands will very easily get fatigued. And the structure actually of this etude is amazingly simple and brilliant at the same time. Uh, the motif the, the, the limit of motive is one bar and the main interval is usually comes to the very last interval so if we talk about here this is one motive and everything comes to this note the next one here it comes to here and it remains uh, this pattern uh, during the whole song The phrase consists of two motives here and the second motive is more important. So that would be phrase, which is two bars. One bar, second bar. And now second bar is more important than the first bar. So if we intonate... This way. And again, this pattern remains the same till I would say um, bar 28, where first motive in the phrase becomes more important. I think this thing, I think this thing. And 
And if we talk about sentence, the sentence here consists of four bars, where again second phrase is more important. So basically, third and fourth bar in this four-bar sentence uh, is more expressive, is more important. Uh, and again, this part of the same till we come to 28. 28, again, the first two bars more important than second two bars. So... I think um, we have this four bar mode, four bar sentence, and this one more important than this one because we're going down, and again, dynamics is going down as well, so it's a little bit less. And then again, we come to this back to the same pattern four bar with. Four bar sentence where second phrase is more important, in which second motive is more important, and this structure is so simple. It's so it's so simple. Um, so maybe I can play you a little bit. Um, at least the first page by motive and phrase and sentence. So first we're gonna play by motive. phrases. So next step, we are going to emotional image of this piece. Um, you probably have you probably already have an idea about emotional meaning of this etude after listening to harmonies of this beautiful music. So what you need to do is express all your emotions through intonation and musical speech. Again, you can only do this through intonation and musical speech. If you just tune into the um, 
character of music and start playing, but don't have uh, enough knowledge and skills to express what you feel, then while playing you will lose everything. So on this stage you're still playing in very slow tempo, uh, taking enough time to express everything you feel through intonation musical speech. Should I show you a little bit? Okay, let me try to show you. <laughs> and you're still trying to play with good phrasing, uh, of course imagining sound texture and expressing everything with correct wrist and elbow movements. It's probably already a good habit for you on this stage. Let's try. emotions through intonation musical speech, um, better you can feel and express yourself through music while playing, through your performance. We need this musical enough expression to again distribute energy while playing. It's like on a little bit different level than phrasing. Um, so we could embrace the wholeness of the piece and create some kind of story with introduction, beginning, development, rising to climax, climax and conclusion. Uh, again, if we or a student don't do this, then the music will be very performance will be very boring, not music. <laughs> performance will be very boring and on some point quite annoying. Uh, so the structure in this piece, again amazingly simple. Uh, what, how I distribute form is uh, this way. Let me remember, okay, so from bar 1 till bar 9, apparently this is introduction. Then from bar 9 till bar 19, beginning. From 19 to 28, development. Now, this part from 28 to 32, if I have some part between be development and rising to climax, because rising to climax starts from 32, it's, it's obvious, then I usually use some kind of feeling of intensification, intensification, when it's like development on even like deeper level. And so from 28 to 32, this is intensification. Then from 32 
till 37. Rising to climax. Climax itself comes to fortissima from 37 till 41. Then from 41 starts another part, another section of this it is second part. And again there is kind of a introduction that goes till bar 50. I'm sorry, 49. Then I'm making beginning from 50 to 59 and then from 59 I skip this development section and go right to the uh, rising to climax from 59 to uh, 64 it's rising to climax that brings us to another second climax that starts from 65 and actually I use it till 77 and 77 I make a conclusion from 77 till the very last bar And if you can play this song in your mind very fast and just try to embrace this kind of form that consists of two sections, uh, which of them has its own climax, then that where you start distributing energy while playing, you wouldn't give everything to the very beginning because you feel it's just the beginning of this music, it's not even the climax of the first section. And then you can um, save energy and bring it all uh, to the climax itself. Then the, uh, how to say, um, the pattern of this energy level would be like this. You know, it's basically one and two. This is the scheme of this etude, um, but if you don't do this, and what usually students do, they just play like this, and sometimes when climax comes, they just do boom, <laughs> so we want to make a big wave over here. So that would be about form. Again, when you want to express it, uh, you express it only through intonation and musical speech, because every single feeling we can express only through our speech, only through our intonation and that would um, transfer somehow and uh, reflect in our performance. So let's go to next step. Next step is time. So now we are um, in the stage where we're gonna add time pulsation to our uh, performance. We need this musical myth expression to choose, first of all, to choose the right tempo before playing so it wouldn't be too slow and relaxed or too fast and rush. Uh, that would be the tempo that just complete the character of music. And also we need to organize everything that we created before in the time space, otherwise your music will be filled of rubato and that will destroy the wholeness of performance again. <laughs> um, in this etude, the, uh, um, I, I will say it every, I will say it half of the bar, like every half. <laughs> so. And again, I feel this pulsation like a heartbeat. And then I mix it with emotional uh, meaning of this piece. And in any tempo I'm gonna play right now, whether it's slow tempo, moderate and fast, first I'm gonna feel this pulsation together with emotional me the, together with emotional image, together with a form of music. So it's kind of all mixed together. Um, and then I will just play. Um, I don't think you can... Okay, I'm gonna try to play. So maybe you can feel that. 
So I'm tuning into emotional image. Then on in the form. And feel it in this time, in this position. I'm going to play quite slow. And then I start playing. because I still have this internal pulsation, I would come back to the original temple right after that. I wouldn't be lost in this new temple. So this is very, very important. And the last step is artistry that we add just to be able to perform in front of the audience, to play confidently and don't be lost in uh, listeners' energy and thoughts to be leader of your story. Um, how to develop this and all this stuff is written in my books, so <laughs> go ahead if you're really interested about. So, um, when I tune into emotional image and form and feel the pulsation of this music, then I feel how I express it through artistry. So everything I make now is very confident and very big. Mm. Okay, again, let me try to show you the difference. Again, maybe now it's going to be too much, but just want to, to let you see this. It's just because I change the way I express what I'm saying. Um, so this is how I achieve this um, this kind of posture and this kind of way of playing. Um, and this is the whole thing what I do when I analyze the piece. And it usually takes for me maybe three days. Well, in the very first stage, of course, it will take maybe a week. But now it just takes maybe three days. And after that, I start a learning process where I um, basically try, um, I don't know what I'm trying, but I'm just learning. So the way I'm learning is um, I'm taking um, maybe half of the, uh, in this video, because it's not really hard, I'm not playing, I'm not learning by two bars, but I'm taking just half of the page and uh, repeating it a couple of times in, in slow tempo, moderate and fast and I do this with every half of the page and then maybe next day I'm learning the same way uh, taking page by page and then uh, by two pages till I can play half of the song and the whole song uh, in fast tempo and of course uh, alone Along this way, I have noticed some difficult fragments that I'm learning separately, uh, and this is um, that could be even two bars, and that could be bars 15, 16, 25 to 28, um, 55, 56. <laughs> well, you probably know better than me. 
what is difficult for you, probably the same. And uh, this is where I'm learning absolutely the same, um, um, absolutely the same way. I'm repeating in slow tempo many times, in moderate and fast until I feel very comfortable. But uh, still, if there is any really problem that I can see, I'm using um, musical speech as I told you before, um, intonating better a problem interval, and um, also. Um, kind of very careful about which kind of movements I make because sometimes I may lose some elbow movement or I may do wrong wrist movement so that will lead to, uh, to, to some mistakes that I'm making in these difficult fragments. Yeah, and after that the etude is ready. <laughs> um, I hope you really enjoyed this video and uh, not only enjoy but also inspired to make something and go ahead and try that out uh, so please be free to ask me any questions uh, I know it takes time for everyone to really start believing the system and understand that you really need this um, even if you like top level pianist <laughs> if you think you're top level pianist <laughs> you probably know you have some areas that you need to improve um, so, like I said before, I'm going to my website, it has three books, you can download them for free, and training book is a guide for this online course, uh, watch these lessons and work with that book and you will develop this musical mean of expression, and then just, you can see how you can apply it to any piece you play, any piece you play. Um, and everything will be in order in your, in your practicing and uh, you will feel uh, so grateful, really, because that will save your time, save your energy, and most of all, will never let you lose your faith about playing. <laughs> um, all right, guys. So I'm, I'm going and going ahead. I'm going to prepare my next etude. It's a secret. Which one? <laughs> and see you in my next video. Bye-bye.